candlestick reversal patterns. There's really only one you need to know, and this is the master pattern. I'm going to share it with you and the three uh, steps to making this work, meaning making money and why it works. So let's jump right into it. First of all, let's just talk about what the pattern is, and then I'll show you how to make money with it. All right. So the pattern is what we have on the hard red edge of the screen there. It's this bar right there. That is the best candlestick pattern that I know of. And it is really, really great, but we're going to have to add two more elements to it. I'm going to share it to you with you in this video. So what is this pattern? All right, let's take that off of there and let me show you what it actually is. So I'm just going to call this, I'm not going to go into the poetic Japanese terms, which are very flowery and, and very nice. Actually, I like them, but I want to make this as simple as possible. I don't want you to have to learn things you don't need to learn. So let's just make some money. So what the deal is this, we want the real body, by the way, this is for a reversal bottom pattern. So the price has been coming down and what we're looking for when we talk about reversal is we're looking for the, this move down to end for it to reverse in price to go back up. So that's the context. All right. So now what is the structure of this bar? So first of all, we want it to open and close near the top of the range. So let's define terms. Let's be very specific and mathematical about this. So when I talk about the open and the close, as we call it, the real body or that colored part of the bar there, I want it to open and close in the top 25% of the bar. So the higher the better, but the top 25% of the bar, when I say top 25% of the bar, I'm talking about the range of from the high to the low. So we could cut this in half. Let me bring up my little um, line here. So roughly, and again, you don't have to measure this exactly. You can eyeball it because the markets are not quite that exacting. So there would be halfway between the high of the bar and the low of the bar. Okay. And then we divide that in half again. And roughly there's uh, my drawings off a little bit, but clearly this is in the top 25% of the range of the bar. All right. So that's it. Now, uh, the other thing is sometimes people think the concept of whether the real body is red or green is important. And in this situation, it really isn't because we need a, we want that narrow range, real body. So because the open and the close are so close together, it don't get um, caught up in whether it's a red or green. Red would mean a close below the open. Uh, green means a, a close below, above the open. But the point is that they're so close that in the real market, it's negligible. And it doesn't really matter if it's that close to each other. What does matter, and here is the, I don't want to say secret sauce, but here is what the logic behind this bar is. There's a market logic. And that is that while people were trading during this period of time, whatever it might be, whether it's one minute, one day, uh, tick charts, whatever, the market participants, buyers, sellers, there were trades that occurred down at these levels down here. But when all was said and done during this period of time, the market participants said, uh, no, we are not finding value that we're going to stick with at these levels. So sure, it traded down here, but it didn't close there. It didn't close here. It traded down there. It didn't close there. Traded down here, didn't close there, didn't close there, didn't close there. So all these trades down here occurred. And then finally, when this time period is up, market said, you know, we value this at this price. So what we call this, the term is rejection of value. All these low prices down here have been rejected. Rejection of value. So little flyers were put out, buying and selling occurred. But at the end of this time, market said, nope. We, uh, we think the market's worth more than that right now for whatever reason, whatever catalyst, whatever sentiment it is. And that is why, that's the logic behind it, that is why this is a bullish bar and we look for a reversal from down 
to up because the sentiment has changed. Look at these bars, all right? Wide range red, wide range red, wide range red. <laughs> Easy for you to say, wide range red. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's like, uh, wait a minute. Oops, nope, we changed our mind. Okay, so that's the logic behind it. Now, there is another nuance that's very important. So let me share that with you as well so you have everything that you need. So a one candlestick bar is not worth a lot. One of the questions is, well, how long do I expect this bottom to last? And that's an excellent question. A student asked that recently. So if you're watching this, congratulations. By the way, if you have any questions um, on this video, feel free to post your questions in the comments, or if you have a comment or want to share to the, to the, with the discussion, put it in the comments below because I do address those. So one that came up a while back was a person asked, well, okay, so we've got a bottoming pattern here, Barry. How long is that good for? Excellent question. So let's look at that because this is the next nuance that is muy importante. And to impress with my Spanish, one candlestick bar pattern is a very, very short term pattern in and of itself. So if we move forward, it's always fun to do this on the hard edge of the screen. If we move forward, bar by bar, oh, look, we got our little reversal there. Okay, cool, popped up. Going up again, good, up, oh, narrow range bar. Oops, not so good. Okay, coming back down, going sideways, going down, going sideways, and oh, now we break the low. So that looked great. And it did provide a short-term bottom, but was, a, was it a trend reversal? No, it was not. It just provided a cycle low is what it did. So the point is, and this is very important, muy importante for international friends, one candlestick bar pattern is not a trend reversal pattern. It's a very, very short-term signal. Now, let me show you how to improve this. One more tip that will improve your probability so that you get a better reward on this. Because right now, this would have been a very, very low reward trade. And actually, I wouldn't have even taken this one. So let me show you what else would be needed for me to take it. This is what I want to see in order to get a bigger reward on these candlestick patterns. You see, again, we have a, a spike bottom bar here. Rejection of value on the lower wick. Okay, but what's the difference between this pattern and the one before it? So the one bar is the same. The difference is what uh, precedes it, what comes before it. We are in an uptrend. I'm not looking for a trend reversal. What I'm looking for is just a reversal of the retrace in a trend. So in other words, these work great as trend trades in the direction of the trend, but timing the retrace. When is this retrace going to end? And we continue back up. And that's what I like to see. This way I don't have to wait for breakouts. I can get in earlier. In fact, let me uh, take this down. Let's see what happens after this. So if we enter there on the retrace in the trend, is that the final retrace? Because this is a big practical question. Is when, how do I know if the market's retracing or continuing in the trend, or if it's going to reverse? In other words, it's going down, it's going against the trend. Well, how do you know if it's the trend reversal? So I look for these patterns in order to find the retrace in the trend. And it's, uh, like I said, now we're looking for a bigger reward and it's um, working out okie dokie, Smokey. All right. Yes, I am a dad. And so I do say dumb dad things. <laughs> okay. By the way, oh, there's another great example. So here we also have a, just happened to come across this, didn't plan this. So here we have a spike uh, topping pattern, but this no bueno because it's against the trend. And that's the point. It's against the trend. So these one bar patterns, any one bar pattern and a $20 bill, you know what that's worth? That's worth a homeopathic amount of caffeine at your favorite coffee shop. That's what it's worth. So you must take 
candlestick patterns, ring price patterns, but see just a one bar pattern like this in the bigger context of the map of the chart. In this case, we're talking about trend. One last thing that I can share with you, um, and I have a tutorial on this, free tutorial, by the way, for all of my viewers, which means you, is that you also, if you really want to add high probability to this, you add it with cycles. And cycles are the timing, the oscillation of the market. So just real quick, and then I'll be happy to give you that. Um, actually, I've got an indicator for this. So I'll be happy to give you for free. So we're looking for, and let me see if I can bring this up for you here. Yes, so oscillations in the market. That's what we call cycles. Now there is timing that goes into this. So we've got a cycle high, a cycle low, a cycle high, a cycle low, a cycle low, and another high. Now these cycles expand and contract. So as you can see, this one, for example, continues to go on for a, a long, 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 long way. So we could say, well, this half cycle is short. That half cycle is short. That half cycle is short. That half cycle is long. So they expand and they contract. They're not mathematically even. It's not the same number of bars. It's not the same number of minutes. And how you measure this, well, that's where my cycle indicator comes in and can help you with that. And again, give it away for free. Just go to indicatorwebinar.com. It's an absolute free webinar. It's available 24 seven. I've recorded it now so that whatever time works for you, you can go check it out, um, get the indicator. I show you how to set it up on your charts and again, how to trade it. So full education information in there, go get it, enjoy my gift to you.